All right, peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. This is yours truly, Amar Mari. I'm the CEO of Synergetic Network Group LLC. My queen, Amani Amari, is the executive director. We are your community liaison for entrepreneurs and consumers, and we are honored to have on the panel with us on this evening, Keith Collins. He is an author. He's a motivational speaker. He's also uh, one of our fellow brothers of the 5,000 role models of excellence, Broward County Public Schools here in South Florida, making a positive impact on the community. This is where him and I had the pleasure of having an interface with one another, and we had a powerful dialogue. Uh, this young man is very, very, very intelligent, very wise, very passionate, very loving, and also obviously very concerned about the community being a part of the 5,000 role models of excellence of Broward County. How you doing this evening, Brother Keith? Oh man, it's a pleasure. I'm doing great. Um, you spoke so many good things about me, man. I had to start writing them down. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, that's what you inspire me to say, man. You know, I, I definitely love to encounter beautiful souls such as yourself, man. So, you know, you and I, again, we had a, a powerful conversation, you know, and as we converse with one another, I began to unpack some things about you in a positive light. Uh, you know, Keith is also a family man. He, he's a father. Um, you know, he has two male princes that, that he's raising up over there. Um, you know, if I left, you know, someone out, please let me know. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Right now, from what we know, there's only two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, there's talks of a, a princess in the future. Um, All right. I'm just trying right. to sleep in the other room, not to make it happen sooner than <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed man so so talk to us brother you know, know tell us about yourself man you know um tell us from point a to b i mean uh, you have such a phenomenal story i know you're gonna have to condense it for us but you know with all that greatness over there <laughs> <laughs> well uh man it's it's cool and, and once again man thank you so much just for the opportunity you're um, welcome when we first started chatting, it was over some chicken wings. And it's amazing how chicken wings can draw people together, hey, right? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, family. He was eating the chicken wings, not me. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Sorry, my bad. Yes. <laughs> I'm no longer a carnivore. I don't want to be oh. a hypocrite. <laughs> I mean, he, was, he had a piece of celery. <laughs> piece of celery. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. They use my saver grace right there. Because I know my friends who know me, I always talk about I'm a vegetarian. I'm borderline vegan. They're like, oh, so he, he was eating some meat. <laughs> no, 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 no. He wasn't. He was not. Hey, can we rewind that and not put that piece in? <laughs> hey, thank you, man. Go ahead and rewind it before we bring it back, bro. Yeah, yeah. So as we were conversing over uh, uh, an amazing meal of celery, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man but no in all honesty as we were talking and just chatting and I got a chance to hear your heart and, and just what you're doing and to be able to um, one speak with a guy who knows himself and, and is confident and that was one of the things that drove me to just talking with you and just learning from you um, in our conversation and um so a little bit of my background, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, um, born and raised. Um, a little bit of my story, mom and dad split up when I was about three years old. Um, that usually, that kind of caused a void um, that I didn't know about until I went on and graduated, I guess you would say through life, um, through middle school. I, I, I tampered around with some things that I probably shouldn't have. Um, one, because, you know, my dad wasn't there every single day. He was there on the weekends. Uh, he picked me up from the weekends and, you know, he tried to instill in me some of the best things. But when you don't necessarily have that there every single day, you know what you can get away with and you know what you can't get away with. And um, so that's a little bit of the, the journey. And it wasn't until like high school I started, you know, pursuing women a little bit more girls, uh, trying to prove my masculinity through the amount of girls I spoke with, talked 
with and spit game to, you know, that was the way of saying, you know, Hey, you're a young man or showing that you had, you had that sauce, so to speak. And, um, but it still at times left me feeling alone and empty, you know, whether it's, um, I dabbled in stuff that I shouldn't have, you know, for us online video watching and things of that nature. But those all things that ultimately, as I grew up, I found out that wasn't the, I guess you say the best plan for me or the thing that I shouldn't have been dappering in. And, um, you know, I did sports. Uh, I thought I was going to be the, the next LeBron James um, in middle school. Uh, I played football, but in, I thought I was going to play basketball. My coach told me, hey, man, you ain't going to make our basketball team. I was like, nah, coach, you don't know who it is. It's me. It's cute. You're talking, you're talking to me. They don't know who I be. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, yeah. And so, you know, long story short there, you know, I, I went out for basketball and um, – I didn't make the team, <laughs> did not make it. And, uh, you know, it, it was one of those points. I was like, ah, you know, okay, cool. And I watched another guy do the same thing, man. And, you know, he played football with us, but he never played. And then eventually he ended up making a basketball team when he first got cut with me. And so I was just kind of shocked by that. And uh, that was one of those moments where I realized that, you know, dude, you have unlimited potential, but it's up to you to kind of develop it. And so when I got to high school, man, I started, like I said, I started, you know, dabbling with girls and started to figure out a little bit more who I was as a young man, um, started to come up with my own beliefs. And it wasn't to college where I had a teacher really looked at me and said, hey, man, you got more inside of you. And I was dumb enough to believe him. I always tell people I was really dumb enough to believe him because, you know, as a young man, you don't necessarily know when you are a man to another man looks you in the eye and tell you that. And when mm, they look at you and say, true. hey, you know, um, I'm going to pass the baton on to you. And um, it was cool. The, the, the teacher, he was a Caucasian male, an older Caucasian male. And he really just like made an impact where he gave me opportunities in the classroom to kind of lead. Um, we would have, uh, what was it, lunch from time to time on, during the, you know, the school year. And I was able to, the next following year to be one of his liaisons. And uh, in that time span, I guess you would say that was around my junior year of college, I was able to have a conversation with my dad and really just share with him how, you know, coming up, there are times that I wish that he was there a little bit more. And uh, it wasn't until high school where I really got the, the realization that him and my mom wouldn't get back together because that was the time my mom got married for the second time. And this marriage is uh, a fateful marriage that's still going on to this day. And my pops, man, he's an amazing guy. He's uh, instilled a lot of values inside of me, too. So, you know, mm. and all in all, you know, I, I look at my life as being one of those things where, you know, yeah, you can say I didn't have my biological father there every single day, but I had a stepfather as well. And so I basically got an opportunity to look at life at two angles, one from my dad's end you know, who, who instill a lot of, you know, Christian values and things of that nature inside of me. And I also got a chance to see from my pop from the, the application of life. And so I got a chance to hear something, whether it says about ladies, I hear it from my dad's point of view, heard it from my pop's point of view, and then I can, can kind of compare it and was able to develop my own truth. And so long story short, when I was in college, I was able to uh, meet this young lady uh, at the start of college. Her name's Tanya. And, um, we started dating two years in. She looked at me and said, hey, you know, God said that um, you and I are going to get married and we're going to have a boy. His name's going to be Jeremiah. And coming from Atlanta, man, there's seven women to one man. I was like, uh, I mean, for real? Like, for real, for real? Like, I'm still trying to figure out this whole dating thing, trying to see if this still, you know, are you really the one? <laughs> you know? So, homie, no, homie, uh, play that. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to, I had to really like quickly, I guess you would say, almost man up and see like, you know, if this is the real thing. And, you know, I, I started to see that there are a lot of tendencies and qualities that she possessed, man, that I, I cherish, you know, I, it's funny, her dad asked me, um, he said, Hey, what is, ask this young man, what is it that he wants from you? And I told her, I want someone to journey with me through life as I go through the ups and downs. And we can really like create something beautiful together. And uh, it's funny because uh, she said yes to to that just thought. And it's funny because I'm also everything that she did not want in a young man. 
And um, wow. yeah, you talking about laughing. She didn't want no, she wanted a tall, she wanted them tall, uh, not black and uh, not country. And so I'm sure <laughs> I'm like five, nine, uh, I'm black and I'm a little country a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got to learn your secret recipe. How you pull that one off, brother, in the love uh, game? You got to share that. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, it's uh, we well, met through Facebook. What's the man. sauce? You put the sauce on it. What do young people say these days? The drip. You put the drip. Yeah, up? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you needed a mop. You needed a mop, my friend. <laughs> and it's uh, it's funny because uh, we met through Facebook. Literally, we met through Facebook, through mutual friends. Back when uh, Facebook, you had to be in college and be a part of the same school and everything. Uh, so we met through Facebook. And through Facebook, we just started to link up, um, talk, chatting a little bit. She found out I had some mutual friends that she did. She did her investigation like women do. So, fellas, if you think the woman ain't investigating, she's investigating. You ain't just going to walk up and, and her not know who you is. She already know who you are. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so we did that, man. We talked first time on the phone. It's actually funny. Her cousin called me and gave her the phone. And we started talking. And we were talking for about five hours that first day. And we talked for like a whole entire week for five hours at a time. And wow. that, that, was wild, that was way before we met. And so wow, like, awesome. it was just like a true friendship that started. So. That is awesome, man. That, that's a beautiful story, man. You know, I can yeah. relate because my queen and I, you know, we definitely had conversated, you know, we we actually um, had connected via social media as well. Oh, okay. And, um, and I, I tell you, man, I, I spoke to her and her, her intellect is what stimulated myself because for me, you know, it's more than just a figure and, you know, her beauty. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I was looking for a wife. And as you know, being a happily married man and understanding marriage, it definitely takes more than a woman's body and, you know, her beauty for that, for the marriage to be long lasting. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I was looking for. Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that because I do remember in college, um, my wife and being able to really say at, the, at a young age, being about 20, 21 years old or whatever that I would stack her against any grown woman like when you just think of grown woman who's out of school in like their late 20s I was like man I'll easily stack my girl against any one of them and that, that was, <laughs> like, and it, it so, sounds like you try to get some husband points over there tonight <laughs> oh man <laughs> not not three, hey, baby three, go ahead cast three, go ahead cast them points in man go ahead cast <laughs> Man, I, I, I truly believe, like, um, you know, when, when most people say behind every strong man, you know, there is a solid woman, I think, beside every man, because truly I don't want to necessarily be out the forefront without her beside me and with me, because then I'm not, I'm only assuming that she's behind me, you know, and my wife, she really is beside me in this journey. Like, right now, uh, I'm at the park, and, you know, I'm having a conversation with you in the car, and she's with the kids at the park and before i told her hey i was gonna speak be speaking with you she was like you know well you want us to go i'm like i'm fine with that and she was like well i'll just hop the boys in the car and we'll all go together and uh, that's something she usually doesn't do because you know my boys there they're not just sit around and do nothing type boys they're super energetic they're lively they're active and um and they're just a handful <laughs> in so many words uh, I almost slipped on some race cars leaving the house. So that's just a, an idea of who they are and what they do. So, Yes, indeed. So let's let's talk about that because, you know, as I mentioned to the audience, you are certainly, obviously, a motivational speaker and an author. So let's talk about that powerful book that you have on the shelves now that's flying off the shelves, yes, you know, yes. into the hand and revolutionizing the lives of people globally and let's talk about the fatherless book that you have out man you know let's yeah. let's talk about that that powerful literature you know okay. your, your inspiration 
you know well, i love i love to do this this is it right here um this is uh 30 years of blood sweat and tears rolled into one book um i heard long ago someone says it's such a steal and i want to say that to anyone it is such a steal on the front end whether you get my book you don't get my book but to be able to grab someone's life and understand their thoughts, understand their emotions, understand what they deal through, understand how they overcome, and it only be considered to be under $20. Think about that. You get someone's whole entire life for under $20. And I think that that's so powerful. And um, so the book is called Fatherless, What I Wish I Knew as a Boy, Learning How to Become a Man in a Fatherless Culture. And the mm. book just takes a journey of my life uh, from middle school, high school, college, and now, and just some of the key points um, or lessons that I was taught or didn't listen to, or I never was taught and didn't understand the relevance of it. And um, so I'm super excited about it. Um, I, I dive into a lot of things that are challenging and are uncomfortable to talk about. Um, I talk about my mom and dad splitting up, how I, First, um, I think chapter one is really the first one where it talks about the womb and where when a young man comes out, there's I mean, there's a gift and a curse with having a young boy. And I believe that because there's so much pressure and there's so much weight on that young man's shoulder that he doesn't even know about. Uh, mm. my, my two sons right now, they have the ability to raise up a community or tear it down. Wow, that's powerful. And for me as a father, my biggest role is to help them to harness that energy and harness that potential and to make it one of the best to where they look at, they look at the world and they figure out how they can make it better or how they can improve upon it. And so that's one of the things that I think a lot of young men don't understand, you know, that mm -hmm. they have this power. I think of a young lady who doesn't necessarily know her self-worth. If her father figure is not there in her life, she runs across this young man who, who then comes in with the sauce and the drip and, 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 and woos her, so to speak. <laughs> but woos her into destruction in so many words because I truly believe that, you know, if that young lady has not been guarded or have been taught by a positive male role model in her life, how to be treated as a queen to where she understands that she's a precious flower, that she doesn't, you know, open up her rose petals for anyone, you know, that um, there's a sense of, there's a sense of wonder. There's a sense of mystery to her, to where she's not easily obtained, you know, to where there's a, a understanding that, you know, she knows how to be treated. And, you know, when I do have my daughter, I'm going to take her on dates because I want her, whenever some young guy comes up and say, hey, you know, what do you think about this or that? You know, hey, let me do this, girl, whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't need you to tell me you love me. My dad tells me he loves me. Um, I don't need mm -hmm. you to try to take me out. My dad takes me to find out in restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how to be treated. So what you're doing right Ooh. now is really doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Wow. So, wow. You dropping some serious jewels over there, brother. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you dropping some jewels over there. I'm loving this. Yeah, man. And so and I think that's and that's that's my really my heart, man, um, with putting this book together is to be able I, when I thought about this book, I. I put it together thinking for the young man that finds himself incarcerated, whether it's in a prison in his mind or in a prison inside a physical prison, because they, they say over 70% of the population inside of the prison um, grew up without father figures. Right now we're facing a, a whole society that has about 30, about 35% of them doesn't have the father figure inside of the homes. Hmm, and and even if they do, and if they do have the father, you know, there's a splitness to it. Whether, you know, dad doesn't live there, there's multiple kids in the picture, you know, so being able to speak into those young men lives because we don't, as men, we don't raise our hand and say, hey, I'm struggling with this dad, you live in other places and I'm not here. Or we've been taught, you know, to stay in a child's place and don't speak about our hurts. You know, if you're That's hurt right. about something, you know, That's suck right. it up, you know, and truthfully, to be honest with this generation that's now and it's coming behind myself, you know, we understand real and we understand fake. And right now it's the season where we're tired of the fake because the fake is what caused us to be where we are today. You know, where people were puffed up with pride, would not share about their hurts or not cry in front of us. And we have this image of crying as this unmasculine thing or, you know, sharing really what's going on with you 
as be this thing that's man is not cool. And so I think authenticity is one of the biggest things that connects us to other people. And it's really time for us to really just step out and just be about those things and um, not care about any judgment or anything like that. It's funny because, um, and I'll let you ask me if they, I'm sorry if I'm rambling. No, 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 no. That's the true. That's the true on here for. So I want the people to get to know you. So do carry on because what you're saying is very powerful and needed. Okay. Now, awesome. So I do, I truly believe that as, as we grow up, it's funny because I get a chance to deal with youth, speak to youth and speak to, you know, young teens. And it's very crazy how most of our influence or most of their influence is about people who are in our grade levels around kids who we really don't like, but yet we try to impress them so we can then get their approval, but not really caring about their approval because we don't like them. Mm. That's weird. So mm -hmm. I go in and I chase these things, whether it's the cars, the jewelry, the money and things like that, to have this status from people that I'm just trying to impress, knowing that I possibly don't even like them or I probably won't even have a conversation with them ever, but I can put it up and say I have it. And I think when I, when I talk to people and I usually speak That's to good. an audience, That's I good. say two things. I say the first thing is I want you to allow me to be my most authentic self. Because regardless if you tell me I can be or not, I'm going to do it. I'm going to step on your toe probably. The second thing I tell them is this. I don't want you to lie to yourself. And I think we have came up so much where so many of us, we lie to ourselves. And we lie to ourselves in many ways. If I'm joking, mm. we lie to ourselves saying we can we can sing, right? We got people. Yeah. <laughs> Only in the to, shower. <laughs> right? Only in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, you have other places that we lie to ourselves. We say that you know we're good when we're really not. One of the biggest lies that we always do um, is you know, man, I, you know I go to church a lot, so we you know you run across people in church and like, hey, how are you? I'm good, and that's it. You see people, hey, how's everything? I'm fine. Knowing it's not the truth, when you can see the hurt, you can see the pain on their faces. But uh, sometimes it takes us just slowing down to really just see what's going on in a person's world. And I think, um, you know, as we continue these things and as we we speak and we we tell the truth, that's how we get better. You know, I can't I can't improve. I can't use my GPS to go to, let's say, Georgia if I never admit where I currently am. You know, and mm -hmm. a lot of us, we want to get to places and we don't know where we currently are. And um it takes knowing where you currently are to get to progress because then you can ask for help. You know, if, if the police, if I'm calling and I'm asking the police to come help me, I just have an emergency. They're going to say, Hey, what's your location? And I must know where I'm at first. And I even think it from a scriptural standpoint, you know, when, when God spoke to Adam and, and he said, Adam, where are you? God is God. He's omnipotent. He knows everything. He knew where he was. But he needed Adam to speak out and say where he up he was so he could then not lie to himself that he can hide, hide from God. And I think that's just a lot of us just need to do that and be honest with ourselves. Some of us are chasing. Yeah. We're chasing mm. dreams. We're chasing our parents' dreams. Mm. We're chasing legacies that mm. we don't even want. Mm. You know, one, because we are afraid. You know, another one is because we haven't even sat down and talked with ourselves. We're so scared to be alone that we can't, like our thoughts hurt us sometimes. We Like we're, some of us, we are afraid to be alone by ourselves because then we have to deal with the harsh reality of how we need to improve on ourselves. Wow, man, you know, you, you said a lot there. So let's condense it, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, this, this is a mouthful here. I love mm -hmm. it. It's, it's a it's a it's a main course meal, so yep. you know let's let's feast on, you know the the spread that you put out on the table for us. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk about then some of the remedies. Um, you know I definitely want to reserve uh, some of the nuggets, so so you know they won't get that <laughs> hard. You know necessarily they need to buy the book type stuff. You know. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. Got you know, just share some, some, some of the nuggets that you have for us about how do we remedy, you know, this social ill called fatherlessness, you know, put some things on the table so we can solve uh, this, 
this issue that we have? I mean, one is just, I, I go back to just being honest with yourself um, to where the hurts are, you know, being willing to have those conversations. Um, I think of just the willingness to sit down. I remember talking to my dad, you know, getting prepped to get ready to start thinking about my future and moving and all of those things because, you know, in my story, I graduated May the 7th of 2011, May the 12th of 2011, I moved to Florida and May the 17th of 2011, I started working with the company that I previously worked for here in South Florida. And in that journey, in preparation to that, I sat down and wrote down some goals with my, my then girlfriend, who's my current wife. And I wanted to know where I wanted to go. So I had the conversations with my dad where, you know, hey, man, here's this void that I found out that I had. And it was because of moments where you weren't there. And that's not saying you're a bad person, but I'm just letting you know that, you know, when I look to the stands and I look for you and I did not see you, you know, hey, that hurt. And when you said this, that hurt. And as you're being honest with those people who you really, who have hurt you and who have wronged you, you must go into it already forgiving them because you must be honest, you must forgive. And then from that, you must start to un unpack what you have inside of you. Um, I think once I moved to Florida, that's when I really started to understanding who Keith Collins was and everything that he had inside of him. You know, I never knew that I had this gift of speaking until I was given an opportunity to someone said, hey, man, why don't you speak about this? And you're always, you know, you talk to people, you're great with people off, you know, and connecting with people, you know, as a gift, you know, why don't you put that to the stage? And then I started to touring around with that, started to exploring that. And that led me to have this passion to be able to speak to people, whether it's an audience, and really empower them to take action. You know, for me, is um, it's very sad to see people um, hear what I say, but don't take any action. So I want to empower people to, to really move and take action. And that's where transformation happens. That's where it becomes your truth, is once you apply information. Um, I say this, and then I'll be quiet, but most people say knowledge is power. I believe that's an absolute lie. I believe a, applied knowledge is power because it's through application Absolutely. that you get an understanding. And as you get that understanding, you then can evaluate and say, hey, I applied it this way. Uh, that doesn't work. Let me try something different. And that's how you get this new revelation. That's how you get a new understanding how to do something. And um, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting really? the different results. So, um, I truly believe that like that's the, the nugget or that's the piece, you know, that I feel that helps us is, um, like I said, uh, being able to, one, be honest with yourself, being able to forgive and then unpack who you are inside of you. And so that means taking risks, ex experiencing failure and evaluating that experience. Hmm. Yes, that, that's good, man. That's good. You know, being a father you're yourself and, and having um, young men who are of, you know, uh, the African DNA, mm -hmm. you know, um, share some, 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 some wisdom with, with our men, because I do know, you know, that, uh, we definitely have an issue with, with men. And as I always say that some men, you know, they will put more time into a dog than their own children. They'll, they'll ensure the dog has a dog house. The dog has its dog food, it has its shots. You know, they'll spend time with the dog. They'll train the dog. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they wanna sure that the dog survive, but they won't even do that for their own child. And then you have those who love sports. They know the stats mm -hmm. of, of all the athletes, but they don't know their children's grades. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, let's- well, Can I add one more to it? Oh, go ahead. The gym. Work it out. <laughs> and, 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 and that's not to really pick at anyone. And I'll let you finish. Um, but I think no, no, no. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. Do. Yeah. So Please do. I, I, I think it's, um, and there's no, I think it's just my experience, man. You know, people, you know, spell love, T-I-M-E. And, and that's really, and I'm talking the quantity time. I mean, the quality time over quantity, you know. I can spend multiple hours with my sons and I catch myself doing it from time to time. 
But if I'm on my phone checking Facebook the whole time, I didn't spend any time with him. Mm. I didn't. Mm. I was in the room. Mm-hmm. Now he can say daddy was there, mm-hmm. but he wasn't there. Wow, now that's good. That's good. Let's talk about that. You know, being physically there, but being mentally absent. So is it safe to say then that uh, you can have a father that's present, but absent? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, that can be easy as spending time in the TV, checking the stats, like you said, and uh, knowing all of the game footage and highlights. And, you know, for some, you know, for some parents, you know, that's time spending time. You know, my dad and I, we spent time watching games, you know, where we talked about the games, we laughed, we joked. You know, that's different as opposed to being able to just watch the game and the kid can't be anywhere around or, you know, they ask for help for something that's of their need, you know, Mm -hmm. then you don't necessarily cater to it or put down the remote to then take care of them. That's that that being physically there, but not mentally there. I see it happen a lot of times. You know, it's funny, you know, right now video games are all the rage and a lot of a lot of fathers, you know, have kids who are playing Fortnite. You know, my challenge for the dad is, you know, when's the last time you explored Fortnite? Or did you just dismiss it as a dumb game or a game that, you know, you have no intellectual ability to play or you don't want to get whooped? You know, I challenge parents Mm -hmm. because I've been in youth ministry like, hey, be okay to be vulnerable. If you don't know how to play Madden, if you don't know how to play live, go and get beat by your kid. What better five days? You know, what better way to to show your humanity, your humanness with your child being being able to be vulnerable? You know, it's so easy to put on this thing as if, you know, we have it all made, we have it all figured out. You know, it's so important to spend time with them and um, really explore what's going on in their world and ask questions. And here's the thing. Kids are not going to give you the straight up and down. You must, for a young man, make his hands move. For a young lady, you must engage with her heart. You must allow her to pick the movie, go whether it's shopping, whether it's the place to eat. You know, for the guy, you know, spend time playing ball with him, ask him, hey, what do you think about that? You know, what do you think about this that's going on in the world? Hey, have you seen the latest this? And stay trending with those things because, you know, as you look and see what's going on in the world, your kids know what's going on in the world too. Give them a platform to have an opinion because if you don't give them an opportunity to have an opinion, there's somebody that's going to give them an opinion, give them an opportunity to have an opinion. And then that person is then going to have influence in their lives Mm. because you think about connection. Connection happens when you and I talk and communicate right when I share my feelings with you you share your feelings with me mm-hmm. and because we do that we connect that's right so you can be that's my right. father and you cannot connect with me so you're absolutely just, right you're absolutely right man I, and i would say effective communication because uh sometime us as men like you said earlier you know uh be quiet when when the boy's crying you know, and things of that nature. You know, it depends on what the situation is, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. how, however, you know, like you said, we, we're taught to isolate the way we feel. And so that that also affects our relationship with women. With women, man. And, 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 and that's one thing, too, that uh, it's important to have a father that's affectionate as well, because I believe that was lacking too in the community is love, man. Yep. It, it's, it's the lack thereof, you know, mm-hmm. that's really causing these problems as well because a lot of us don't understand that love is, is a superpower, it's actually strength. But mm-hmm. as you know, being a fellow man yourself, uh, we're raised to, to, to think that it's a weakness, that you're a wimp if, if you show how much you care for, you know, a female, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When this should actually be champion, being mm-hmm. one of chivalry, you know, yep. that should be champion. We we should be, you know, giving brothers high fives on that instead of being a player. Yeah. Because a player mm-hmm. lives by mm-hmm. that title. You know, what players do they play a game, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they, you know, then we say, oh, he got game. 
You know what I'm saying? So he's a player. He got game. You know, so all those things tie in together. You know, where they then they they take, or if it's the game, then it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? So now they take a woman as a joke. You know what I mean? They don't really take her serious because of what's been infused within their mental faculty about a woman. You know, and I've been very fortunate. Let me caveat on what you said earlier in, in your book because. I was told at the age of five, my father told me he didn't want to see me anymore. I had siblings that I never even met, you know what I'm saying, due to poor parenting, Wow. you know, and it affected all of us. Yes, man, my father told me to my face at the age of five, and that affected me. That really did affect me, you know, and fortunately, I didn't think that I was worthless, you know what I'm saying, because I had a mother that was pouring into me, but I still had lacked the masculine mm -hmm. presence, you know, of my father. Although I had men stand in the gap who were good examples. And this is the reason why I definitely concur with what you said, that we need a male present. We need a male present because I had strong men outside of my father that were present, that were examples for me. You know, and, and that's the reason why I'm a gentleman today, because I had men in my life that taught me that, that you know, you, that's that's when you the man, when you take care of a woman. See, I was taught that I was mm -hmm. taught that that's what's really being a man, because my grandfather demonstrated that by how he took care of my grandmother, mm -hmm. as well as my uncle and other brethren that that were in my spirit. Back at the temple I attended in um, Rochester, New York, Pentecostal Miracle Deliverance Center Church, Bishop Willie Smith Jr. I give a shout out to him and all the brothers that was there during my era because those brothers showed us how it should be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They gave us, like, I've been very fortunate, man, to have example of men that look like us actually doing positive things, being well off, being entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? So it showed me that I can be that way and still be a man of strength because these were men who I look up to, yep. who they didn't have not one infeminate sign about themselves. You know what I'm saying? They carried themselves as a man. They dress like a man. They talk like a man. You, you, you mm -hmm. understand? You understand? Yeah. You know, so, you know, we just have to be real about that too. I mean, no disrespect. You know what I'm saying? At all. But, you know, in order for us to teach men how to be men, you know what I'm saying? We have to be one who, you know what I'm saying, is uh, masculine and dealing with the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think that's big. Uh, I think about my boys. You know, I have a four-year-old son and I have a 17-month-old. And kids will do what they see. Like, hands down, no questions asked. They do what they see. And my four-year-old, he shows affection to his brother. Before we leave, before he goes to school, he gives him, where's my best type of thing? And for him to see that or experience and do that, it's only because he's seen the relationship between him and his mom. You know, there's times where both him and his brother at around the same ages right now of like one and a half, they would see me kiss their mom or show affection to their mom and then grab my head and my wife's head and put our heads together and have us to kiss again. Like both of them at the same age time frame, they would make us have us do the same thing. And it's through my love for my wife mm. that they then understand that, hey, daddy loves mom. Mm. You know, and mommy and daddy are together and they're yes. one, you know. And yes, um, I like that, man. I like yeah. that. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. And I, it does affect them. You know, I've seen mm -hmm. that that affection too show too. And and I'm glad you mentioned that because I seen that as well. You know, yep. I've seen men not only pull out the chair and open up the door, but I'm glad you said that. I've seen men being actually intimate, you know. Um, of course, within in good taste, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in front of me, you know what I'm saying? You know, a kiss, let me be very specific, 
yeah. you know, yeah. kiss and hug, you know, hold the hands, you know, yeah. walking. That's that's what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm talking about, you know, because PG, PG. Some, some people, they have no restraint these days, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that that you say that uh, because I think really um, just within my kids and being able to really model out to them um, just the relationship that I have with their mom, you know, it's um, like I can you can ask either one of them, you know, and it's funny, my my 17 month olds barely talk, um, but he does mumble words, but they understand, you know, what love is. They understand the the affection piece of it. You know, if my um, if my toddler hurts his big brother, I tell him he needs to say sorry and he goes and says sorry. Then he rubs his brother's head. You know, that's just a sign of this affection, you know, and I, when I think of love, I think of just the biblical aspect of being patient, being kind. And I think that's something that sometimes is hard to do. Um, oh, yes. But going back to your point where you talked about us as men and protectors, um, I mentioned this in my book and I talk about it. Um, Dr. Phil kind of just put some stuff out there about manhood and I added some things to it and it's in the book. But um, I talked about, you know, I think a lot of men are facing this challenge today where it's hard or it's challenging to be, quote unquote, the man from a society standpoint. Man is the guy who mm. is the breadwinner that mm. brings in all the money, brings the bacon. Yes. You okay. know, and there's this macho figure, right? Yes. But yet, so, my question so to looking you, at what, what is do you man? do is, mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, okay. if the woman makes more than the guy? Hmm? Uh, okay, let's, let's work it, man. Well, let's okay. work on it. Let's go. So who's, <laughs> so who's the man then if, um, or can you say you're the man if you come into the woman's house, she already has kids, and truthfully, she's financially well off before wow. she even met you. Now, how wow. do you establish yourself as a man, quote unquote? How do you protect the wife? Wow, and, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's so good. I, it's funny, and, and it's funny because you know I experienced that me and my wife. You know, we talk, and uh, I look from a biblical standpoint. It says, "Hey, man, you're the provider and the protector." And I looked at protection not as this physical thing. If I'm gonna beat this guy up, but I must protect her mental state. I must protect her perception of herself, her her ability to question who she is. So if that means I must say, hey, we can't watch this show in this house because I noticed that if you watch this, you then question, you know, who you are. You question things about yourself. And if I need you to be at 100 percent for us to go on this journey called life, I don't want you to have any of these questions. So that kind of goes into the man. The man must be able to see that. And say, hey, I don't want you to compare yourself to anyone else because I am the one that that is coming home to you, and you're the one that me. And I think it's important for these men who are growing up that see these women who have all of these accolades must assert themselves and be confident and say, hey, I'm going somewhere that I want to be a part of this journey with you and my role as a man to allow you loves you so I can provide the love. I might you might make more than me, but I tell you what that I am going to be a provider. I'm going to be your supporter. I'm going to be your cheerleader as well as you being mine. And I think it's also funny as well. Wow. Too, from a biblical standpoint, didn't find himself made, right? So God then created Eve. So, but if you and I were to lift something that's heavy, right? Right? And I would say life is heavy, right? You must find someone that is stronger than you or if not just as strong as you. Think about that. If Eve is the help me, if you're trying to lift something that's heavy, right? You can't have someone that's weaker than you. And I think, you know, in the biblical standpoint, it says that, you know, the wife is the weaker vessel. It's not, it's saying that there's people and there's South Spot. I tell you the truth. My wife is the ultimate opposite of everything that I am not. Mm-hmm. Point blank, mm-hmm. period. She'll tell you, I'll tell you. She's mm-hmm. admin. I'm not admin at all. I'll probably lose 
my wallet if it wasn't in my back and so there's a there's a journey that we must go on as men as we're finding ourselves but um it must be known that we must search we must be honest with we're weak you know and i think it's very very big because it's in that vulnerability and oh last thing i'm sorry (laughs) women as women hear these things from at us or question our manhood because if a man opens up to a woman it takes a lot He's probably stewed over this for moments at a time, years probably. And so when he opens up, give him that piece of security. It can't be like, oh, man, you say punk, you cry or whatever. No, it must be, man, tell me about that. Well, baby, I'm sorry that has happened to you. I want you to know you are my king. You are able to do more than you even think you can. And that goes back to when I had that teacher who believes more in me than I believed in myself. As women, mm. women must be able to help the man rise above, must be able to help at times to secure that confidence. And ultimately, you know, my confidence doesn't come from my wife. It comes from my relationship with God, our creator. But it's there is something to be said about having someone that's physically beside you, that's your cheerleader, and that's cheering you on. Absolutely, man. That That was a wonderful 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 inspiring message on this evening and so family again this is a good brother keith collins he is a motivational speaker he's also an author if you want to book him um brother keith if you would at this time tell everybody how they can find you via social media and if they want you to come and to uh speak at one of their events or on their platform um the best place is this is my one and all lo- location spot is Keith Collins 360.com. That's Keith Collins 360.com. Uh, you can purchase my book there. You can uh, get links to my YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, uh, my website to book me, um, all of those things, everything you need to know about me. You can send me a text message from that one site. So it's a one stop shop for everything. Um, Keith Collins, and that's uh, KeithCollins360.com. Wonderful. Thank you once again for my queen of mine and Mario for coming on the platform on this evening. We greatly appreciated you. She was over here cheering you on. (laughs) Trust me, I'm married to her. I know if she cheer you on, you saying something. (laughs) I promise you that. You know, because of her character. So you had somebody over here rooting for you, brother. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> Inclusive so much. Inclusive myself. Well, again, it was such a pleasure to have you come on. Of course, this will not be uh, the last time. So we're looking forward for you uh, coming on when you write that next book that you have, you know, <laughs> and uh, that, that powerful documentary you're going to have coming up, you know, I with it. that I book, brother. It. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to bring you back on. So again, family, here we go. Keith Collins in the building. Thank you so much for tuning in to Synergetic Network Group LLC Spotlight, where we're the community liaison for entrepreneurs and consumers. We are here to present your greatness to the world that you can be greater. Have a blessed one. All right. See you guys.